Good evening. Welcome families, teachers, staff, and sixth graders. Tonight we will continue a long-standing Hadley tradition by celebrating the sixth grade class as they leave elementary school. In a few days, they will no longer be elementary school students. They will be middle schoolers. So tonight, let's acknowledge how far our students have come, how much they have learned, and how much they have grown. I present to you the class of 2021. Mr. C gave me a haircut in class. I remember in the third grade when I met Macy and she introduced me to everyone. I remember in fifth grade when I pulled two teeth out because I was bored. I remember in fourth grade meeting my best friend Catherine. I remember in fourth grade dissecting owl pellets and it was really disgusting. I remember in kindergarten calling my teacher Miss Strauss old. I remember in fourth grade dissecting owl pellets in Mr. P's class. I remember in fourth grade making baking soda and vinegar volcanoes. Remember in 
fourth grade when I was dissecting owl pellets and I thought it was really disgusting. I remember in fourth grade when I first came to the school, the first person I met was Jack Kelly. I remember in third grade dressing up as Blackbeard for a project. I remember my first music lesson with Mr. Skelly in fourth grade. I remember in first grade in the play Character Matters, I was Humpty Dumpty. I remember the time in sixth grade and I told a joke to Brayden and he spit out his water all over Stephen. I remember in preschool when I used glue as chapstick. I remember in fourth grade when we made a city out of boxes. I remember throughout the years having fun with all my friends. I remember in kindergarten when we had chickens. We would like to thank you for your time and patience over the years. From our first grade Thanksgiving show and our class play, Character Matters, our third grade recorder recital, and... All the winter and spring concerts that you organized. And let us not forget all the songs that we sang out of tune and all the wrong notes we played on the recorder. We thank you. When you think of the school nurse's office, you probably think of band-aids and cough drops. Those are things that we got from our nurse, but we at Hadley Elementary got so much more. Our school nurse, Miss Constant, talked with us, listened to us, and laughed with us. When we needed a break, she let us have one. And when we needed a warm smile, she always had one. Miss Constant has been such an important part of our years at Hadley Elementary. This is why we, the sixth grade class, have chosen Mrs. Constant as our sixth grade celebration speaker. Thanks, Missy and Jack. I never thought I'd have to stand up in front of this podium again. That's like one of my dreaded lunchtime duties, making the announcements. So bear with me. I want to thank you guys all for having me. Um, all the official thank yous to the principal, administrators, and teachers, but mostly the kids, who really are so dear to my heart, and I miss you guys so much. But I thought since I'm up here, we'd do a little test to see how smart you are and how much you've learned, okay, about your school and if you're really ready to go on to Hopkins. Let's see. So I want you to raise your hand. First hand I see, I'm going to call. What year was the school building built? 1996. Very good. Very observant. Okay, this one might be harder. What faculty member rides a motorcycle and longboards? Wow, you're good. <laughs> what is the number of the last locker in the sixth grade wing? Ryan. Okay, does anyone have a different answer? Because my source was a little different. Okay. No. I'm going to give it to you, Ryan. My, my source either texted me incorrectly or I read it wrong. <laughs> As 395, but we'll go with you, Ryan. Okay, what faculty member has a leprechaun for a son? Blaine. Yes! Now, this next one is funny because I asked my daughter, who graduated from here, well, she just graduated from college, so however many years ago that was. You guys are the mathematicians. And I asked her this question, and she knew it right away. How many buses line up in the circle for dismissal? Xander. Oh, 
you're good. So how many years did I work here? I could not tell you that. I had to call and find out. That's pretty bad. Uh, okay, as the nurse, I have to ask this. What is the best way to stay healthy? Eat healthy foods is a good one. Wash your hands is better. All right, both are good, both are good. But I would have said wash your hands. And then beat my son Levi made me throw this one in. I just gave you the answer. <laughs> the question was, who holds the record for the flexed arm hang? Levi. Yahoo, all right. You guys are pretty good. Um, Recently, my dad, who's 80 years old, and I couldn't remember if any of you guys remember him coming in, playing the violin, ever? No? No, eh, maybe. Anyway, he broke his hip. He's gonna be fine, but he was in a rehab out in Boston where he had to learn how to re relearn how to walk and how to strengthen his leg, how to even get out of bed. Every day, three times a day, he'd go down to this huge, huge room, which was lined with beautiful windows, filled with all this equipment uh, for his physical therapy. Um, and there were so many people there that were not there with broken hips. There, were, there was a young kid who wasn't much older than you guys who had gotten paralyzed somehow, I don't know, from the waist down through an accident. He had to relearn how to do everything. There was a man who'd had a stroke and was paralyzed on his left side. There was a woman who had an amputated leg and she had to relearn how to do things. Um, each person was there and they had their own personal challenge, their own personal story. And you would think, as I'm describing this, that it was a depressing place, but it was one of the most amazing places I've ever been. It was filled with life. It was filled with each person trying to find their own strength, to find their strength, to get where they needed to be, to do what they needed to do. Um, okay. You and I may never be in that position physically where we don't have the strength that we need. Um, look at all Sam Pollard struggled with and yet he persevered and he made the most of what his body gave him. We may all have really strong bodies and the challenge, we will also have challenges along the way. Um, so I wanna go over and just talk to you guys about some of the strengths that your class has because you guys have so many strengths that you are gonna bring to this world. Every single one of you is so incredible and unique. I think there's maybe two or three of you that I don't know but the rest of you I've pretty much known since you either came to the school or you were born or you were in preschool. So I know that many of you have strengths in art. I actually have an original painting by one of you hanging in my kitchen, in my living room. I have an original uh, clay creation from one of you sitting in my car. It's my little good luck charm. Um, I know that many of you have strengths in caring for horses, in riding competitively, in athletics, gymnastics, I'm trying to look at each of you as I say these things, <laughs> um, softball, baseball, soccer, basketball, bike riding, trampoline jumping, swimming, roller skating, dancing, farming, you guys, some of you are amazing at growing and harvesting crops, operating machinery, collecting and boiling maple syrup, that I love to eat, uh, caring for animals. You guys, some of you have goats, chickens, dogs, cats, birds, cows. I mean, you guys are amazing. Some of you excel at cooking and baking, at science. Some of you win awards for your science ability, for robotics and things that I cannot even comprehend. Uh, some of you are, excel at scouting, your strengths in scouting skills, both girl and boy scouting. In video games, again, I can barely master Pac-Man, which you may not have even heard of, but that is a skill. Um, outdoor adventures, in acting, in performing arts, singing, and actually that was a beautiful song tonight. All of you guys, you have so many strengths. Musical instruments, Lego competitions. You're just amazing. You have so many things, so many strengths. Um, and they're gonna carry you far in this world. But there's another kind of strength that I want to talk to you about, and that comes from within us. It's strength that we need when things don't go according to plan, when maybe we don't 
win the game or even the championship. Maybe we don't get a prize that we'd work really hard or a good score on the test that we really studied hard for. When we see others succeeding and we feel like, man, you know, I just can't do anything right. When we see a friend who's hurting and we don't know what to say, or when we're feeling sad because of someone, something someone said to us. Um, my dear friend Sam Pollard taught me that it's not the strength of the body that counts, it's the strength of the spirit. And when things happen that don't go according to plan, we have three basic choices. We can let it define us, we can let it destroy us, or we can let it strengthen us. We often think of strength that is only from winning, if we're winning, if we're first, if we're number one. But I want to propose that strength can really come out of failures. We're all going to fail at things, and we can grow stronger from that. Um, Mahatma Gandhi, do you guys know who Mahatma Gandhi is? I had to practice saying that name, Mahatma, kind of like it. Um, he said, strength does not come from winning. Your struggles develop strength. When you go through hardships and decide not to surrender, that is strength. Inner strength isn't always visible. It's difficult to measure and it takes practice, just like running a race or painting a, getting a painting just right. Um, it takes inner strength to keep quiet sometimes and to pause and count to 10 when something, someone says something really mean or something that annoys you. Um, but it also takes inner strength to apologize when you forgot to do those things and you just react. And we're all gonna do those things. Um, it takes inner strength to change schools. You guys are coming up to a big, big thing. Um, you're going to have to go into a new environment with new f teachers, new friends, new expectations. Inner strength also needs people to help us and to guide us. You guys are so blessed. If you look around this room, you see all your families, your teachers, your um, custodians, everyone who's here that's been part of your life up to this point care about you so much. Um, and at Hopkins, there's going to be many adults and even peer mentors that are going to help you. But don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say, you know what? I don't get this. I don't know the answer. Don't be afraid. Inner strength, the strength of spirit, is not dependent on comparison. My strengths are completely different from Miss Gill's or Mrs. DeBartolomeo's or anyone. We have different strengths. And if I'm comparing myself to them, I'm always gonna come up short. I'm never gonna feel good. But if I look at their strengths and I say to them, you know what, I appreciate this in you. This is so cool. I notice this about you and I really like it. You can do that. You can celebrate each other's strengths. It doesn't mean you're deficient in any way. It means that you're building someone else up. And I know you guys are really good at that. And I challenge you to look for strengths in your classmates as you go on over the next few years, because you're going to get to know each other more and more over the next six years. Um, because all of our strengths are different, too. So you guys are nearing the end of Hadley Elementary School. Um, but you're at the beginning of your life journey. You've had an amazing time here, and I want you to know that you have impacted every single life that you've touched in this school. You sure have impacted mine. And just like Hadley Elementary School is a part of you now, you are a part of Hadley Elementary School. You have a great foundation here. Don't forget this place. Don't forget to come back and tell them how you're doing. And even if it's not that you're top of your class, just come back and say hi once in a while. They all really care for you here. And it's such an exciting time. You're gonna go learn new things. You're gonna meet new people, try new things. Don't be afraid to step out of that box, to do something new, a new challenge that you've never done before. You might fail at it, but that's okay. That'll give you inner strength to keep going on. Um, I was just... I was gonna say some things that were pretty nursey and not so good, so I'll just say that um, each new day is a new time to find your inner strength. And Eleanor Roosevelt, I think, said it best. She said, with the new day comes new strength and new thoughts. And I know you guys are just gonna go forward and just be amazing with each of your individual strengths. And I thank you so much for letting me be a part of this 
last day here at Hadley Elementary School, and I wish you all the best. It takes a lot to run a school. We have been very lucky to have great administrators who care about st students. Mr. Udall has been our principal for four years, and Dr. McKenzie is finishing her first year as superintendent in Hadley. We are very lucky to have them both looking out and caring for us. We thank you. A school also takes a lot of community support to work well. At Hadley Elementary, we are also very lucky to have so many people from town who want to help us. The Lions Club has presented dictionaries to Hadley sixth graders for years. We thank them for the years of a tradition. At this time, Dr. McKenzie and Mr. Udall will present our sixth grade certificates, and Bob Waisaki and John Vasallo from the Lions will present us with our dictionaries. Thank you, Taylor and Zachary. We have a large class this year, don't we? <laughs> Four sets of twins in this class, by the way. Something in the water that year. Okay, the moment you've been waiting for. So we're calling up in alphabetical order. I learned a few things. Some of you have some really interesting, intriguing middle names. So we'll start with Destiny and Marie Anadon. <laughs> Faith Leanne Apolinario. <laughs> Josiah Jack Beck. Bruce Michael Bellinas. Austin Lee Boisford. Joseph John Boisford. London Paisley James Cannon Eckerly. my list go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh boy, that was a bad one. I gave her the name of the list students. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Oh, everybody needs a chuckle. Okay, I'm going to hold on to these things. All right. Kieran Anthony Cullen. Jocelyn Donna Cusson. I did it again. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay, I'm really bad tonight. Stand back here. Okay. All right. Darian Xavier Ellis. <laughs> Christian Carl Irali. Jack Mike Michael Veltovic. Okay. Dylan Thomas Phil. Christopher Allen Gaudet. <laughs> Ma 
Ryan J. Gould. Lillian Teresa Graves. Michaela Helen Hanscom. Koji Henry Ishida. Delaney May Kelly. Jack Robert Kelly. All right. Robert William Klesch. Stephen, Ma uh, excuse me, Stephen Michael Cotfilla. All right. Avery Rose Lapis. Zoe Lynn Lapis. Taylor Blaze Lavalley. Very nice, congratulations. Abby Rose Leonard. Jacob Ryan Lobel. Zachary Miles Locker. Allison Elizabeth Markowski. Thomas Anthony Motika. Christopher Michael Mashensky. Claire Elizabeth Nichols. John George Pipsinski. <laughs> Kathleen Ann Regish. Okay. Macy Lee Ring. Alexander Logan Ruchenko. <laughs> Brittany Ann Marie Russell. <laughs> Ashley Rose Schaubecker. <laughs> Catherine Ann Marie Schwal. Rachel Lynn Schlosser. Right. Kevin Soto Guzman. Right. Kirsten Anastasia Zala Cotcroft. Sonia. Valentina Zala Kotkroff. <laughs> Braden Frank Tudrin. <laughs> Eric Robert Umberger. <laughs> Jessica Marie Wilda. Jack Henry Zena. Uh, we have one student who was not able to be here tonight, but I want to announce her in any way. Michaela Jane Popkowski. So, all 
All right. Mr. Waisaki, do you want to come over and say a few words? Only if I have to. We want you here. <laughs> John, would you like to join us too? Okay. <laughs> okay, it took three minutes to do this literature written out here, so I'll be up here for three minutes. Okay, as you heard, Bob Wysocki, I've been a member for 40 years. I just completed two terms as King Lion, and we have a new king, that guy right there. John Vassallo, he took right over. Uh, we meet once a month, we pay dues. This is our 35th year with dictionaries. And we just celebrated our 60th year as lions in the town of Hadley. A lot of people like to know what lions really do. Well, our goal is to serve and donate money. Any money we get, we've got to get it someplace. And we do eye research. Emergency site and hearing, Lions Club International, Clark, Clark School for Hearing and Speech, Hopkins Academy Sports Night, we do a scholarship. We sponsor a Cal Ripken Little League baseball team. Disaster relief, sight programs, hearing programs, diabetes awareness programs. Lions Clubs is the biggest world service club in the world. 1.4 million members, 210 countries. There's 46,000 clubs. And we just try to do things in Hadley, for example. If there's a student that needs glasses, a needy, we'll take care, we'll get the exam done, we'll pay for it, and we'll pay for the glasses. And all you've got to do is see the school nurse, and she does all the paperwork. And, no, and nobody really knows about this, maybe the officers in the club. But don't be bashful. Uh, two years ago, the sixth grade with Nancy Yama, right here, the class, the whole class collected a thousand pairs of glasses, and they were sent like to New Jersey, and then they're scanned out, and they're sent to either either Haiti or India and places like that. And this was such a great thing that the little town of Hadley made this. Here's. The, this is the Lions Magazine. It comes out like four times a year. And Hadley was mentioned in here, and the elementary school was also mentioned. It was a great feature. So there's over a thousand pairs, and we had it right here, and we had some digitaries from Pittsfield came and they patched them up and took them. So we do a lot of things like that. Uh, what else I got? <laughs> Okay, Hadley Club, like I said, it's 61 years old this year. And since 1968, the Lions awarded to International Foundation $700 million. Like I said, we try to find places to put it, and most of it goes to eye research. And and eye stuff like that. How am I doing, John? Am I over my three minutes? Okay. I don't see anything else here that... Uh... Oh, we got a golf tournament. That's how we make some money. Okay. And we need, we need players, you know. And it's at the ledgers this year. It's a hundred dollars. Takes care of your cart and your meal and stuff like that. And we we also need new Lions members. We're hanging on to like 20, and 
we know everybody's busy with sports and stuff like that, but it'd be nice if we could pick up a couple guys. Even ladies can join now. We'll take ladies. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Where's, where's my grandchildren? Hey, Jack. Wave to Grandpa. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. We greatly appreciate the Lions Club's support every year. And uh, we look forward to having Bob come up. And uh, anybody interested in joining the golf tournament, now you know where to go. This year, the Hadley Elementary community lost a very special boy. Sam Pollard, a fifth grader, passed away in March. The sixth grade class coordinated a family movie night at the beginning of May as a fundraiser. We asked for donations at the door and sold concessions during the movie. Half the money raised was donated in Sam's name to the Hole in the Wall game camp. Sam went to this camp for four summers. Founded by Paul Newman in 1988, the Hole in the Wall believes that every child, no matter their illness, should experience the spirit and friendships that go hand in hand with camp. We are appreciative that our friend had such a wonderful place to go. Some of, us, some of us have been at Hadley Elementary since preschool when we had Miss Mary and Miss Holmes. Others have joined us along the way, but no matter how long we've been here, we all still have wonderful memories. Please enjoy this slideshow that shows the fun that we've had and how much we have grown, and see if you can figure out who each student is from their baby picture. Enjoy.
Those are great pictures. That's what parents are feeling. Jocelyn, that's what parents are here for, to embarrass you. As a parent, I would like to thank the teachers and the staff who have taught our children and who have cared for them over the years. You have given them all such a special gift, and we are all so very, very appreciative. To the class of 2021, <laughs> thanks, Destiny. Remember the lessons you have learned here at Hadley Elementary School and take them with you as you walk the halls of Hopkins Academy. Good luck, work hard, and be kind to each other. We are all very, very proud of you. I would like to thank the sixth grade teachers, Pam Bombardier. Jess Plour, and Mr. Siaglo. But I also want to bring attention to the fact that we have a large number of our staff here tonight who are here to say goodbye to you, to congratulate you, and for teachers, and paras, and all staff that are here, thank you very much for being here tonight. We greatly appreciate it. I thank Dr. McKenzie for being here as well. And Lenny Constant. We thank Miss Brain also for the hard work that she put in getting us the songs ready tonight. But all this wouldn't have happened except for a group of the sixth grade parents who asked me not to call them out, so I won't, but you have put in a lot of time and effort, love, caring, and this has been a wonderful evening. It's been an evening of celebration, so I'd like to give everybody a round of applause for all of you that did that. All right, sixth graders, not much longer, right? All right, help if I get my glasses out. Reach that age where you need cheaters. You are stepping up and moving on from Hadley Elementary School. I am very proud of each of you and the wonderful accomplishments that you have achieved this year and in years past. I have enjoyed seeing each of you grow as a person and a student this year into the individual who's becoming a lifelong learner. You've accepted the challenges of being all that you can be and you have each succeeded in your own special ways. I'm sad that you are leaving Hadley Elementary School, but I'm excited for you as you begin the next school journey as seventh graders, and most of you will be entering the middle school at Hopkins Academy. I hope you will remember your time here at Hadley Elementary School with fond memories. Remember your friends and the good times that you experienced. Remember your teachers and the staff that cared for you, taught for you, and helped you grow to be the successful person that you are today. Most of all, thank your parents for loving you and supporting you. I am confident that you will be prepared for the challenges at Hopkins Academy, and I believe that you will achieve, excuse me, believe you can achieve and you will. Lastly, be proud that you are a Hadley Elementary School graduate. I wish each of you the best and much success in the future. You did it, you made it. Congratulations, Hadley Elementary class of 2013. 2015, excuse me. Congratulations. I've been asked to remind you, boys and girls, there are, and, and everybody in the audience, that there are some great refreshments back there, and uh, there's also a goodie bag for each of our graduates. Thank you very much, parents, for all of your support through the years, for being here for concerts, for this event. It has been so meaningful. I know your children love having you here. This has been a wonderful evening, and at this time, thank you very much. Enjoy yourselves tonight. <laughs>